So if you have a servo tester like this, and you got the inputs, uh, battery, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. You always have to have a charged battery uh, to run it to test your servos. And if your battery gets low, then you have to stop and recharge your battery. It's kind of a pain. Well, I had a Android battery charger. It wasn't a brand name Android battery charger. It's a, it was an aftermarket one. A little rinky, rinky dink thing that had a cord uh, going into the bottom. It wasn't like the real Android ones that had a USB cord that you can disconnect. So if the if the power supply goes bad, you can just take the cord off. Or if the cord goes bad, you can just change out the cord. It wasn't like that. The cord was built into it. So I popped the cover off of it with a pair of pliers. Pretty easy to do. It just kind of snaps on. And uh, the cord, it went bad on this one. So I checked the voltage at the board. It was 5.1 volts. Well, standard servos work on 5 to 6 volts. Um, it puts out like 5.12 or 5.16 volts. So it's perfect to run the servo tester. So all I did was take an old servo lead. Uh, I, I checked the polarity with the multimeter. Um, which side was positive and which side was negative. You can see where it's hooked up now. But it works great. You plug it into the battery port, plug the power supply into a wall just like you would to charge your phone, and you can run servos all day if you want to. So it's kind of a cool thing to do with a old phone charger. Put it back together, put a little super glue on the, or not super glue, but uh, hot glue uh, on the bottom of the cord to as a strain relief, and there you go.